Thank you so much. All right, so um, how many people did attend my talk yesterday? Okay. Um, so I actually have some workbooks over at the table that I was sitting at over there. So if you want to pick one of those up, it will kind of help you with some of the things we talked about yesterday. And um, it's just my little thing that I need to get rid of before I get on a plane uh, to go home. So um, actually, I got some of them up here too. So if you want to use ability, uh, like a, a workbook that's from our talk from yesterday, please, please grab one of those. So usability testing. Um, has anybody done usability testing before on their site? Okay, a couple people. Okay. So yeah, and we're going to talk about exactly what it is. I just wanted to see how many people had like kind of experienced something with the name usability testing. Um, so you guys know who I am. I'm Elizabeth Pampalone. I own a marketing agency in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm a marketing minimalist. I create content and we help our clients create one year of content in five days. So um, I also have the podcast. If you haven't checked that out, it's a two-minute podcast on marketing tips. So very actionable things. Um, we put out one almost every Tuesday. And I teach on a lot of different pieces on successful marketing strategies. And this particular usability testing is for websites specifically. And this talk is very, very short because I want you to actually do these things. So if you are sitting at a table by yourself, you will need a partner. <laughs> so we will at least, lead, at least need two people to a table um, or four people to a table. So you don't have to move right this second, but you will have to move at some point um, if you're sitting by yourself. Um, because if you don't do this usability testing with a partner, you can't really do it because you can't do it yourself. That's the problem. <laughs> and that's why a lot of people don't do it because they don't, they don't realize that it can't be done alone and kind of siloed. So usability testing is the your mom test. That's what I call it. Or the your nana test or the Aunt Becky test. Really is for the person who doesn't really have a clue about what the website is about, but they can navigate it, they can get around, they can access something that they need to access, even though they might have never even seen the site before, they might have never heard of the concept before of the business or the organization. They can do everything they need to do with no knowledge of anything about the entire site um, or the entire subject that they're even looking at. So I call it the Your Mom Test, but I also like the Aunt Becky Test, so that's another one. The first thing that comes to mind when I do the usability testing, and I'm actually sitting with someone to do this test, which we're going to do in a few minutes, is the branding piece. If your site is not consistently branded, meaning the colors are very consistent, you don't have 10 colors going on, you don't have 10 fonts going on, you don't have 10 font sizes going on, um, you need, and you have your logo in a nice, clear format in the corner where it's supposed to be, <laughs> um, then it will make a lot more sense to the person who is either testing the site or using the site in general as a consumer. So I put this slide back up here today because I wanted to make sure that you guys saw this again if you hadn't seen it already. These are the file formats you need for your logo. Uh, EPS and AI are editable logo files, PNG transparent, black, white, gray, and full color, and then you need a PDF of your logo just in case your printer or something might need that in the future and then a JPEG of your logo because some, some websites only allow JPEGs to be uploaded. But I also do for this entire list an, a square version and a rectangle version of the logo. They might look almost completely different but they should at least look like the same brand. <laughs> um, and I do make sure that I have the black version of the square and the rectangle, the black ver the gray version of the square and the rectangle, the white version of the square and the rectangle, because if you don't have all those pieces, when you're actually trying to do things for usability on the site, it can actually, you can run into problems where you don't have some of these pieces. So making sure you have consistent branding is one of the first keys to having a good usable site. However, this is kind of before you even get to the test. <laughs> you have to have that going on. So now let's talk about the website itself. I like to break websites down and pretty much everything, social media, email marketing, down into some very specific 
elements so that if you're building anything for any one, you always have a formula to follow. And then you can always add or take away depending on what the client needs. So we talked about this also in my minimalism classes. What do you even do? What does this site do? And I know that um, David talked about this this morning as well in the SEO. What is the objective of this entire site? What is your one message? And if you haven't discerned that from your site and you're, you're having kind of some trouble with it or you think you know and then somebody tells you, no, that's not the right answer, <laughs> um, then you really want to make sure you're discerning and defining what is the one thing that when a client comes to this site that they have to do. And I thought that David did a great job earlier of really drilling down and getting people to kind of uncover <laughs> what the one thing that they needed people to do on their site. Um, for example, I've taught this class many, many times, and when I do usability testing, not in a group like this, but with like, I would say clients, not necessarily marketers, <laughs> um, is I will do the usability test from the podium. And I might do one or two of those to show you guys a couple things. But when I do it from the podium, people that are sitting out there and I'm working on their site, they just keep telling me, well, you're supposed to do this. How would I know that as the client? You're not there to tell me that if I'm at home on my computer and it's midnight. I have no, I have no idea. Why, how would I even know that? So you want to be really clear about what you want them to do, but you want to make sure that they can understand that before you, you don't have to tell them. You don't want to have to, be, you know, have to tell them in a, as a personal thing. Like they have to call you and go, I couldn't find your pricing. It should be literally right there. <laughs> so... Then you need to define your target market. Who are you speaking to? Speaking to one person is really important for the usability of the site. Um, we talked about um, realtors yesterday, how when they have a site, you can say, here's for buyers and here's for sellers. You're talking to two audiences, but there's a page for buyers and there's a page for sellers that helps them to define what they need from you. Um, and it helps to give them that really narrow focus versus saying, here's the 10 things we offer. I hope you can find the one you need when they don't even know what they need anyway. They need you to tell them that. So we don't want to talk about um, niche again. We want to just make sure that you do have a niche and that you're focusing on that. Again, talking to that one person. And then you want to look at what does the website need to actually do? So this is the functionality part. Not just what are you telling them that they should do, or what are you, what's your message, but what is the functional piece that your website has to accomplish? And the customer experience is huge here because if you have everything that you've designed came from between the two ears you have on your head, it's probably not usable. <laughs> it's usable to you and maybe to people in your organization, but probably not to very many other people. And so the usability test is going to help you to see that client experience from someone else's perspective and really dive down into well, what does my website actually have to do. And I think David, again, made that great point earlier. It should do something, and it should actually make you money. It should sell something. Um, we talked about privacy policy and things like that earlier as well, making sure you have those things. This is less on the usability side and more on the CYA side. <laughs> Just want to make sure you have some of this stuff so that if someone can't use your site and they decide they want to sue you, which has happened to some former clients of mine, uh, then you kind of are covered in that way. So when I talk about usability, this is not a marketing tactic. This is kind of something that I do as a web designer, web developer, um, but it's something that I don't really, I don't really use tactics at all because they are constantly changing every five minutes and usability is something that stays through that whole thing. It just kind of is a, a constant. You don't have to worry about it changing. Usability is usability. Um, people will understand more as time goes on and they'll be able to understand more about how a site should function and how sites work because as we've seen in 2007 when I started with WordPress, People didn't understand even what WordPress was. <laughs> it was like early days. And then now people are like, oh yeah, WordPress, I've heard of that. So people understand things as time moves forward. So that's the only thing that really changes with usability is how much people understand. But even then, you know, there, there's still things that are standard and consistent from even back in 2007 that still work today. 
And if your site is not simple, you're going to have usability issues no matter what. You're, you're going to have just complexity issues. So how many people would say that their site is, they would consider it simple? Simple site? Okay. Um, a simple site doesn't mean you have three pages. A simple site means that your navigation, the pages that your home page, the kind of the landing pages people land on first, those places are simple. I have probably 40 pages on the back end of my site, but they're not all visible in the menu. They're not all visible like right in front of your face. So I lead you to them based on answers you give me throughout the site. Okay, so now it's time for you to actually do the test on your own site. And I'm gonna do one site for you um, up here. And I'm gonna do it uh, to kind of show you what a usability test would look like for you guys. And does anybody would like to volunteer who maybe is sitting by themselves and doesn't want to move? <laughs> okay, so I saw your hand go. So what, what is your website? Skyrocketradio.com. Skyrocketradio.com. All right. Oh, hold on. I got to go on my hotspot. I forgot. Can we go back to the slides? Yes, the slides are actually at getabsolutemarketing.com forward slash WordCamp. Okay, now I'm not gonna look at this site right away. I'm, I kinda glanced at it, but I didn't really see much. So I want you to tell me the one thing that I'm supposed to do on your site. What is the one thing that you want a client to do on your site? <clears throat> Okay, so the first part is irrelevant. So you want me to buy something. That's right. What do you want me to buy? Uh, my, my service. What service? Uh, make the radio station website. Okay, so if I'm going on here, I should be able to look for, I'm looking for a radio station website, and I should be able to purchase it on this website. To sign up for the subscription plan. Okay. You said purchase. That's what I'm looking to buy. So that's what I'm going with. And this is the test, okay? <laughs> so the question you're going to ask your partner when we do the test is, what do you want me to do? I helped him out a little bit because he said, check out what we do. Of course, I could just read it and be like, I checked it out. And then he gets nothing from me. There's, there was nothing that he said. But then he said, buy a service and he told me what service to buy so now I know what consumer I am just so for the sake of doing the test for you um, you won't need to know that for your test you just need to know the one thing your person wants you to do on their site okay try to be as specific as you can when you give your answer because you both have to give each other the answer you do this one thing okay you don't tell me where it is you don't tell me what button I'm looking for you don't even tell me the name of what I'm looking for I just know that I'm here to buy a radio website because that's what I'm here for, right? That's what he has built this entire site for. I'm going to be kind of mean. He knows already. I talked to him earlier. <laughs> I'm going to be kind of mean, but I want him to see what happens if a consumer comes to your site and they don't know anything. They're just looking. They think they know what they want, right? So the other stipulation of the test is when you tell your person what they're supposed to do, they're going to pull it up on their screen, okay? And you, if your site is being tested by your partner, you have to take your hands and put them here. And you have to take your mouth and throw away the key. You cannot say, nod, wink, grunt. You can't do any of that. You have to sit on your hands. Close your mouth and watch. So that's what you're ready to do, right? You're going to take notes. <laughs> but you can't say anything. Now, I'm going to try and use this site. All right. So I'm here to buy a radio website. So I see easy ways to use sports radio, country radio, rock radio websites. Okay. And I see that there's multiple websites on this screen. They all kind of look similar-ish, so I'm guessing it's some kind of formulaic thing. But then I see these that are all different. Say goodbye to cookie cutter. Okay. Tools to help me make more money. Well, that sounds good. 
proven formula. Hmm, okay, 35% of all websites, WordPress. Okay, so okay, sounds good. Oh, they have some broadcasters here that I might trust. All right, well, um, I'm gonna sign up. Let's do it. I'm ready. I've I've seen enough. I've I've learned plenty. Okay. Um, station group website one to three four plus. Hmm. Well, I only want one, so sounds good to me. On air schedules. All right. I'm gonna order now. And four hundred dollars setup fee. So I owe five twenty five this month, and then one twenty five monthly. There are branded station pages. Now, this is where it might get confusing. I'm not sure what a branded station page is. Hmm. Let's see. Extensions maybe might tell me. Let's see. And you're having such a hard time over there. You're just like, no, no, it's not the page. <laughs> Premium extensions, job board, directory. Okay. I don't see anything about branded pages. Let's go to radio websites. Packed with features. Page builder. I don't see an explanation of branded web pages at all. So if I go back to my cart, I don't know if I need this. I mean, there's no monthly additional fee. So now I'm stuck, like I'm confused. Like where did I get that info about branded station pages? But it tells me some about it, but it, I don't know that I know enough to make a decision on how many I need, because now I can do more than one, but if I'm doing one to three sites, but if I only need one site, so now I'm confused. So I didn't get enough info through the rest of the site that gave me the info to do this. Now, if I, if I knew more, maybe I already had a conversation with our friend over here, or maybe I had heard him speak at something and I had more information prior, then this wouldn't be an issue. But because I'm here, randomly found him on Google, I'm not really clued into as much as I should be. Now, I did a very cursory look at the site, right? I did not go through everything. So I don't see a search on here, but I don't even know that that would help me because a lot of searches on websites don't work very well. <laughs> not that I'm my experience anyway. Um, let's go to pricing, let's see. Does it have it in the frequently asked questions? No. Nope, not even in there. So I would probably, if I was gonna put, fix it, I would put it in here somewhere, um, either on the radio website section or in the pricing section. So now I'm like, well, I'm not gonna buy it right now. I'm gonna maybe, maybe I'll book a demo instead because I don't know. And look, I'm gonna say I need help. Oh, but then I'm just sending an email. All right, I'm just gonna book, I'm just gonna book a time instead. Nope, can't. Will let me? Let me see. Let's go to let's go to March. Is there times in March? No. Nope. nope, it won't even let me. Let's look at online demos. Oh, these are just the sites themselves, so I won't get to talk to anybody. So I can't book a time for some reason. And if I try to get help, they're just gonna email me and probably tell me to book a demo. <laughs> So I'm kind of stuck at this point. I could have gone forward had I know what a branded page was. Because if I, let's say I moved forward without it, but then they were like, oh, well, you didn't check that. It's actually more because it's an add-on now. And like, I would, be, I would be afraid of not buying it <laughs> if I needed it or buying it and then not needing it. So, so do you see how this is working? Like I'm just working through it as a consumer that doesn't really know. But then again, think about your clients. They don't really know what they want. They don't know what they need. <laughs> they're going to do the same thing. They're going to go around in circles, and they're not even going to spend as much time as I did. They're going to bounce before this. Any questions about the test that I just did? No? Okay. Are you ready to do your own test? No. No one's ready. <laughs> All right. The reason um, I did the test and I wanted you to see it um, that way is because I did this at WordCamp Birmingham in 2016. A guy taught this almost exact same class and I haven't seen it in any WordCamp since. And I took this test, I was in the audience and I was like, my site's fine, I've been doing this 10 years, like, I don't need this. But I did the test anyway. 
And he said specifically, you cannot use a client site. You have to use your own site. And all the people in the room are like, marketers, we're not, why would we, our sites are good. This is going to be easy. And it was the most eye-opening thing that I have ever experienced at a WordCamp. So I want to encourage you to take this opportunity and do the test with the person at your table. If you're not at a table with a person, find a table with a person <laughs> and do the test with somebody, especially if you don't have a computer or whatever, find somebody with one, uh, iPad, whatever, because it will change your life, just saying. Um, and then I'm going to have you guys share at the end. So we're going to do the test for, I'm probably going to give you about 20 to 30 minutes. I'll probably give you um, 20 minutes for one of them, maybe 15, 20 minutes. And then I'll have you guys switch so you'll do the other person's test, okay? And you guys can share a computer, whatever, whatever needs to happen. Um, so I'm going to give you t uh, 15 to 20 minutes for the first test, and then we'll come back and do the other one. So, initial reactions from what you just learned and witnessed. Still crying. You're crying? <laughs> Still crying, okay. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. I usually get that response, yeah. What else? Too much information, maybe. That might be one of the things, okay. Not simple enough. That's, that's sometimes a, a good problem to have because then you can kind of figure out, well, what are we actually selling here? Uh, what else? Any, any other insights, like one word kind of, one sentence insights you guys got? Redundancies. That can happen too. All right, so I, I wanted you guys to go through this again, like I said, because I went through it and it just changed my whole perspective, not only on my site, but on the sites that I built for my clients. Because once I went through it and I was the client in the way, I could see it and go, oh my gosh, what have I been doing to everyone else? Kind of by accident. Um, and so now when I, you know, when I go through and I build a site with a client, we go through this part before we even build the website. I'm asking them these questions in our branding sessions to make sure that when I get to the website, <clears throat> there is no question about what we're doing and why we're building it. Now, usability still have to happen after the fact. You have to test still after you build it, sure. But getting to that point and eliminating some of those downfalls and those pitfalls in the beginning before you even build the site helps so much. So having some of these questions answered first can get you ahead of the game a little bit. Um, were there any questions about how you might conduct this usability test other than like being in this room, like when you go out in the world and you actually need to do it. Yes. I don't think so. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, so one of my questions I was thinking at the beginning is, so if we're, obviously we're here, we know what we're doing is, but um, we've got somebody to, to test it, but when we're out in, in, in the wild and we're looking for somebody to test, how, what's the best way to go about even finding somebody to just like pull off our, you know, the Aunt Becky that will come in and test it for us? How do we find that person the best way to do that? So you can go and even if you're, let's say you don't have anybody near you, um, you can, one, you can go to a coffee shop. You can literally just ask somebody, do you have five minutes? Can you test this website for me? Um, and you can just pull them aside and see if they'll do that. The other option, and that's when you have a physical person. And the thing about having a physical person is if you can ask them to, to tell their thoughts out loud as they're doing it, that's very helpful for you as the test E, I guess. Um, but if you can get them to do that, you're not just listening to what they say. You're absorbing all of their body language their way their eyes are moving. Are they darting around the page? Are they, I saw her over here earlier squinting. She had to put her glasses on. She was like, oh, so tiny. Um, and so she said it was so tiny, but he could see what she was looking at based on where she was focused and things like that. Also her body language of, was she tensing up when she was trying to find something? Was she nervous about, does she even really know why she's on this site? Like, does that make sense? Like you can just feel so much more from a person just from all the nonverbal stuff they're doing. If you cannot have a physical person in the room with you, and this can even be 
sad to say, some of our spouses aren't like the most tech savvy people. <laughs> and so sometimes you can just get them to test it because <laughs> that's another great person you have just like right there. Um, but if you don't have that physical person near you, another great option is Zoom. You can actually get some, some of your a friend, maybe it's just like a friend that lives in another state that you don't see very often or whatever, and you'd have this Zoom call with them. You say, hey, I'd love if you just test this website for me. I'll send you a Starbucks coffee, like we had coffee together, right? And so you can get them to go on Zoom, share their screen while they look at the website. You can then see them in the camera, and you can watch where their mouse moves. So, and you can get them to do the same thing, think out loud, that kind of stuff. Um, and if they're not talking, but you see them moving around, and especially if a person's with you as well, you can, you can ask, I guess one time you can talk, you can say, what are you thinking? Like, what's going through your mind right now? Like, what's, what's happening up there? You know, what's, is there something wrong? Do you, are you not finding what you need? You know, that kind of stuff. And then they'll say, yeah, actually, um, because some people don't just verbalize, right? They need to be kind of prompted. So that would be one way I would find some people. There's always a way to do it, but that's one way. That was really good, especially coffee shop. Just go buy them coffee and ask them to do that. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions about the test or how to do it, like when you're not here? Any other questions about um, any of the other parts of elements of a website, things we talked about in marketing minimalism, because I think I feel like it all goes together. Um, any other questions about that? No, I did too good a job? Of course I did. <laughs> um, so I do have a few things that, um, oh, is there a question? Yeah. Okay, good, great. I was uh, gonna ask, I showed up late, so you can tell me to shut up. <laughs> um, have you used like third-party tools for site tracking, like? Hotjar or Microsoft Clarity, and how would that fit in your process? So I would use those if I'd already done a physical usability test, uh, because I'd want to see what a person could get out of, like could work out the kinks for me first, um, and then I would use something like that to kind of see after the fact if there's anything that was like missing or lacking. Um, because sometimes, like I think Amber mentioned this in her talk, you just need a manual person to look at it, because sometimes those tools don't completely do the job, because they're only looking at what they can see, and it's not always what a, a human is thinking and seeing at the same time. So um, I would use them in that way. Yes, and they have the mic right behind you. Hi. Um, in terms of using this testing method in like a UX, UI design process, where mm -hmm. would this fall? This would be kind of at the beginning and at the end. So I use some of these questions at the beginning to get some of this information first so that I'm not floundering around in the, in the UX as part of it, the UI design. But um, if I've already built the thing, or maybe it's a site that already exists and you're trying to get the client to see the problems, like why they need the redesign or why they need to fix these problems, um, then I would do it after the site's built also. So I kind of bookend it, but I use the questions at the beginning and then I do the actual test at the end. <clears throat> so I have like, this is terrible to admit out loud, but I have zero faith in the people that are supposed to be using our website in terms of, uh, y'all know the struggle is real. Uh -huh. But with that said, I, I always err on the side of like duplicating links. Like for example, on our about page, it has a, um, it has something about like contact GEP, but up in the navigation menu, for every page in the header and the footer, you know, there's got a contact link there too. And when she was doing the usability test, she's like, oh, well, is this different, you know? And I was just kind of wondering, is that, am I doing that wrong? No, I think that you can repeat links like that because they're your call to action. I think what it may be the user, er, like the user issue with that is that when they see something they think, like, it said contact here, and then it said contact again. So maybe it went to a different email or something, and maybe it contacted just one person because it's on the about page. Maybe it just went to your email versus the info or, you know, whatever. So I try to use, whenever I have those kinds of links there, try to use different language to get people to do something so that they don't see it as, is this the same thing? 
because even though they're worded the same, that, that kind of is what may be confusing. So instead of, you have the contact at the top, that's typical, that's normal. Um, but then on the pages, it might say something like, book a call to get started, or just get started, or things like that to just change the language a little bit. Almost every single like call to action link that I have requires you to book a call with me. They almost all go to the same link. But all the, the titles or the buttons or the links that they have the, the names on them, they all say something slightly different to lead you to action. But they don't say, contact us, contact us, contact us, contact us, contact us. So. Okay, that's really helpful. Thank you. Yeah. And I did want to mention something about sitemaps. Um, I'm actually going to go to my website. Um, does anybody else have any other questions? Questions? Okay. So I wanted to talk about sitemaps and just kind of little bits of design that um, Amber will probably help me for, but <laughs> we, we will always be at odds, Amber. We will always be at odds. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, but I do want to talk about the header, like the, not the header, but the menu first, because this may look like the most boring menu in the world. My logo's on the left, my, lo my menu's on the right, and there's a button on the end. <laughs> but if you are thinking about your consumer, you don't want it to be overly complicated for them, especially if they're on mobile. It has to be super simple. And if they can easily find what they need in the menu, great. If they can't, and they're not even looking at the menu, they're like, overwhelmed with marketing? Yeah, overwhelmed with marketing. Oh, this might be my solution? Okay, I'm a business owner, I'm gonna click here. But even though it says four business owners right in the top, I'm still duplicating it, it's still the same name, but it's, I, it's just different people need an, sometimes more information, sometimes not. Depends on how they learn, depends on how they, what, like what they come in thinking when they arrive on the site. Maybe they come here thinking they need one thing and then based on reading your content, they're like, oh no, I actually totally need something else. Or maybe they get confused while they're on your site and if there's a way for them to talk to somebody by booking some call or something, then sometimes that's all they need is just to talk to a physical person. And that's just so much more helpful. Whether it's a chat in the corner that's live or it's a physical phone call they can make because what I find is that a lot of my people, they are looking for me at midnight while the laundry's finishing before they go to bed. <laughs> they are not looking for my stuff on a regular average work day. It's like the last thing they do because the last thing on their list and they're trying to get other things done and if my phone's not going to ring at midnight <laughs> I'm not going to pick up the phone and be like hey it's Elizabeth sure let's talk and this allows them to put it on their calendar and to get the help they need and then I can actually answer their questions and ask them more questions but sometimes if you have a physical phone number because that's the way your business works have a physical phone number for them to call and leave a message if you're not answering or have a chat in the corner that they can you know get right to someone, um, even if it's a chat bot initially, uh, so they can actually find the answers they need if they have a question. So um, I just want to talk about that menu because I don't let my clients put a lot of stuff in the top that's like, what we do about us. Like the fewer words you can use in your menu, the better, because it's just specific. It says it's the about page. It's telling you about the company. <laughs> if you have history and staff and all these other things, link those on the about page or have them on the about page. But you don't have to like, let me tell you all the things in like the menu, right? So I try to be as specific there as possible and then put the content on the pages. Put more of those words on the pages. Um, so anybody have any questions about sitemap? Yes. Or, or menus. Oh wait, she's, she's got the thing. <laughs> Forgot. <laughs> Sorry. My question was about, um, do you not ever uh, recommend using the drop-down menu in the navigation menu? Like, for example, for about, but like you, that could be a drop-down, and then you could have, like, history and directory and that kind of thing. I do occasionally, if it's absolutely necessary. Um, I'm trying to think of a client that I've used it on recently, and I, I usually don't. <laughs> I usually force them to not do it. Um, I actually did, I 
think this is the name of like their site link here. Um, yeah, so we had this um, this page for a client, and they had a drop down with these three things in it. These are their main products. Um, but what we ended up doing was putting them on this page in this way versus having a drop down with the items. Because for the most part, people are gonna need to know more information before they get to this point. So they're not just gonna click on it and click on pond and then go to it. And if they've already, they already know they need the pond, they're probably already in it. So they're not gonna just go to the website looking for pond, they're gonna have a login and a separate link and all that other stuff. So, excuse me, this is more for just the basic person who has never heard of this stuff. So that's where the, the drop down would be needed, maybe like up here. But really, when they click on the wish pad, they get to see information about it, who it's by, what it is, and then the three products they offer versus having a drop down that says the wish pad, and then a drop underneath it, it says Pond Bay Challenge. Um, because you wouldn't even know what those were if you, you were just like, what's the challenge? And you'd click on it, but really you should know what the pond is first, then the bay, then the challenge, because they feed into each other. So having it in this format kind of allows you to read left to right. Um, oh, sorry. Um, so this gives you more of that flow. So we're leading them into something versus kind of forcing them to choose what they need up, up front. Um, the same thing with my site. If you actually looked at my site yesterday, I had a drop down that said virtual. And I was actually listening to myself yesterday <laughs> while I was talking. I was like, oh, I'm not talking to my people correctly. <laughs> so I actually um, put up a page uh, for marketers. And then I have the three things that marketers would be interested in from my site. So instead of saying, here's all the virtual stuff we offer, here's all the in-person stuff we offer, how would you know which one you need? You know more who you are. And then you can tell me what you need based on who you are because I'm going to give you examples of those things. So I did restructure it a little bit because of that reason. And so now I don't have the drop down anymore. And I hated having the drop down <laughs> because I knew that it was still confusing. But this made more sense. And so as I reworked it, it made so, many, so much more sense to do it this way and say, if you're a business owner and that's what you're here for, I will tell you exactly what you need. Here it is. Here's info about me. You can view the portfolio. That's all a business owner needs to know. But for a marketer, there's different things that I'm offering and there's different ways to explain it. So, um, so I try to avoid drop downs if I can. Um, I don't like having, um, especially on mobile, it just gets, it can get so funky the way the menus work sometimes. So, so I try to simplify it down as much as I can so that you don't have that issue. You don't have those in there. I have, like I said, like 40 pages on the site, but they don't all, <laughs> you don't see them all unless you need them. <laughs> Question, any other questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, well, it's 2.36, it's a little early, but um, I'll give you some, some time before the next session. If you have questions for me, um, I'd love to talk with you. I do have the Pro Tool Kit um, that is free on my website. Um, you can go to getabsolutemarketing.com forward slash free, or you can go to getabsolutemarketing.com forward slash WordCamp, and you can see all those slides. I'll put the videos up there. My past WordCamp talks are up there. Um, and then, of course, a link to the toolkit and all the free stuff is there as well. And I made some exclusive wallpapers because I have time <laughs> to do these things. Um, and so I'll show you what the wallpaper looks like and how I use it. So this is one of them. And basically, it's just three boxes in the background, and then you can organize your icons in the boxes so that you can kind of find things. <laughs> so there's three of them on there. There's a silver, a tan, like a gold, and then the green. Um, so anyway, that's on the WordCamp page, and it's in the free library too. So, so yeah, it helps keep me a little organized, because <laughs> otherwise I just have icons everywhere, and then I can never find them. <laughs> <laughs> never know what they are. So, well, thank you guys so much for sitting in here with me and doing the test and participating. And I do have a couple of things up here to kind of give away and share with you guys because I cannot take them on the plane. I literally have only two bags to my name, so <laughs> they won't let me take any more bags on the plane. So um, please come up and get them, and I will 
gladly give them to you. Thank you so much.